2013. Time right now is 14.07. I'm out here to talk with Brittany Bowers at... Wednesday when we talked, um, I had very little information when I talked to you, but the information I did have was that somebody, yeah, you're fine, somebody seemed to think that you at one time or another had made a statement to a Katie Holland, and I'm probably repeating myself, and I'm probably repeating what Chief Deputy Oliver had stated that he said something that's conflicting. Yeah. Um, that being, you had picked up Jacob, brought him back to your house. Prior to stopping at your house, you guys had stopped at a gas station, picked up some beer. That obviously happened, from what I can gather. Um, you guys went back to your house. You all went outside and you shot the gun. That obviously happened. Where the story started to change, according to Katie, is the idea that you had stayed in the kitchen, you were making a Bloody Mary. I think there was some talk of you making a Bloody Mary at one time. Um, they were in another room, they being Jacob, who apparently was on the phone talking to a friend. As you're making this Bloody Mary, you heard Jacob make the statement, be careful, there's one in the chamber or something to that effect. Then you heard the gun go off. He walked into the other room, you seen William with the gun in his hand, and he drops it. That's what Katie apparently told them, them being, I believe, Greg Majoy, who's their private investigator on behalf of the Lombarios and whatnot. I personally made contact with Katie yesterday, and she pretty much told me what I just said to you. She said that conversation occurred between you and her on March 18th while you spent the night at Katie's house. Do you remember spending the night at her house? I do. Okay. I do. And you woke up and out of the blue just, hey, I need to tell you something. Yeah. And that's when it came no, into play. she knew Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, so she asked me about it, yeah. Did I give her details? Not really. I think she knows the details from the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason that uh, McGookie contacted her in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, my Facebook got hacked into. You told me I that. Told you. Right. Um, so... You know, they probably went through my messages to see who I did talk to, you know, like even just a little bit, just my friends list to see. And Katie is going through a lot of shit with the court already. Um, I think she was doing it for the money, personally. She's just trying to get conflict started, and it just really baffles me. Yeah, well, it baffles all of us because... Where was Evan in her story? Was he just not there? Was he not? I don't believe her name, his name ever came exactly. up. Um, her story conflicts, and, and I'm going to tell you this as an investigator for spending umpteen months on this case, that I take away your statement, I take away Evan's statement, I take away Lewis's statement, and what happened happened. Everything supports what happened happened, minus what you're telling us. Um, you know, that's how confident I am that, unfortunately, Jacob had the gun in his hand, and unfortunately, the gun went off. Mm -hmm. um, 
I am comfortable with that ruling. Unfortunately, we haven't come up with everything that we know that perhaps everybody needs to know at yeah, one time like, or another. Are you guys just saving that for when? Well, the problem we ran into, and, and this case has been a very unique case because I've been a police officer for 24 years, most of them being as a detective. And I've had cases like this before. Mm -hmm. The case in itself is not that difficult of a case to resolve and try to determine what happened. But what makes it so interesting is the way that the news messenger, or not the news messenger, but the Sandusky Register has handled it uh, along the same lines of Mr. Attorney Maguki, how he's handled it from the very get-go. Um, it, it's, it's really thrown us for a loop to the point where if we tell Maguki or anybody on this side of Little Barrios what we know and what we think, they take that information and it gets put out in the newspaper right off the bat. And then a lot of it we found is not even factual information. That's not what we said. That's what they seem to think that we had said, and that's what they put in the newspaper. And we go back, we try to rectify it with them in hopes that they'll, they'll, they'll make a correction of some sort, but they don't do that. They just leave it, let it ride. So it's to the point now where we just we can't release anything for fear that whatever we do release, it'll it'll get twisted and it'll be put out there in, in the wrong way. Conspiracies will happen because yes. of it. Yeah, yes. I get it. So it's, it's been a nightmare along those lines. This is, has probably been more of a nightmare for you and William and, and Evan. Well, um, Evan's really not involved with anybody's anything. He's just non-existent yeah. to anybody. He had one statement and that was it. But, I mean, yeah. the Katie Holland thing, she just wants, it's like they put up a reward on Facebook mm -hmm. and, of course, you know, anybody who is in as much trouble like you know personal wise mm -hmm. even on a personal level with Katie and plus her her court situation she's gonna look at that and be like oh yeah I want money and you know McGuggy might have contacted her and might have said hey will you do this favor for me and I can give you this in return yeah. and it's just crazy that it got that far like what does her word even mean against mine I'm a witness what is she to this case and acquaintance of mine that I met a year ago, two weeks after it happened. I'm not going to open up to a girl about anything like right. that. Like, right. I never got into detail. Right. I never, you know, I told her the gist of what happened. Like, yeah, we were in the living room, we seen it happen, and pretty much how scared I was and how freaked out it made me because it, it put me in shock, you know? I, I never told her how I was where everybody was sitting even. I didn't tell her anything of anything. Was anybody there when you had that conversation with her? Could anybody be a witness to that? Do you no. remember? Um, Just the two of you? Actually, there was this Ashley girl that stayed over there, but she got into a fight with Katie and, like, left. It was over, like, a three-day St. Patty's weekend, and Katie's girlfriend had cheated on her, and they were all sorts of just partied out, I guess you could say. And I don't know what would convince her to turn her back on somebody. And then I thought, well, money. She's in a lot of trouble right now. She's hurting money-wise. She needs money. I think it's bullshit. Who's, who's her girlfriend? Brittany Buck. Brittany Buck. Is that the one she lives with in Bellevue? Yeah. Okay. If I were to confront her, what do you think she would tell me? Would she stick up for Katie or? I don't know. Me and Brittany, we go way back. We do. Um, but I'm not sure because I haven't talked to her. I haven't talked to her since her brother came back for his like 24-hour day pass from rehab. Okay. So, I mean, all I know is that they're both, like, kind of still doing, you know, experimenting with drugs still, and they're just people I don't associate myself around, like, I don't like them. Okay. Now, when, when Katie had this conversation with you, I think it was, what, a, two weeks ago? Tomorrow, maybe? Thursday? The 11th or whatever. Yeah. Um, did you make mention to her? I have not listened to the audio. 
Uh, I haven't been privileged to that yet. Really? Your county has it on their desktop. Yeah, for some reason they're not willing to share that with us at the moment. I'm assuming they will in due time. Uh, but I'll get to that here in a minute. But it's my understanding that you may have said something to her while they were to ask me if I know you. I'll just tell them I don't know you or something along that those lines. That was regarding her case. Okay. Um, when she was like, what do I do if McGookie calls me? I was like, just tell him you don't know me. Don't say anything. It's not like I would call your lawyer and tell them, hey, I have new information about Katie Holland's case. Okay. Like, I wouldn't do that to her, and she is not a part of this case, so why would she want to be a part of it? Right. You know, like, out of the blue, this random girl who I met twice, maybe three times in my life, she wants to be a part of this big case. For what reason? Why? Out of And she didn't speak up at all the first, you know, if that was the fact, wouldn't she have said something sooner rather than later? And I've asked her that question yesterday. So you've only known her for a very short time? Yeah. Um, and were you one that hung out with her, associated with her? Or? I'm not really. I hung out with her the St. Patty's Day because I didn't have a ride home. She took me to Huron. She didn't have gas to get me back home. So I was stuck there for three days. We finally got gas. It, like During that time, we were going to just go to Florida. Just because. Just because her, she wanted to try to get money to go to Florida and we could just take a vacation because her girlfriend just cheated on her. And I was going through stuff and this Ashley girl that I still don't know her last name, she was there and we were just drunk and talking about going to Florida and how awesome it would be to sit on the sand. It was like a two-day experience. And then I seen her again like, what, four or five months down the road when I was at Nowhere Tavern with my mom. And then I seen her again when I was leaving Nowhere Tavern another time, like four months after that. I was with my mom that night, and I went and stopped at seeing Katie and Brittany because I was in Bellevue. I left like 25 minutes after, you know, I just sat there and talked to him, and Brett was out of rehab for the day, and I was asking him how he was, and, you know, I left. That's it. <laughs> but Katie wasn't even really there that time. She was running around like she came in for five minutes and then left to go wherever so yeah she's uh okay now what was your conversation what was your business between you and the chief W. oliver he wanted to ask me questions about this phone call because okay. of the thing because of what i said of what you just asked me like he was like, why would you tell her to lie and say that they don't know you? And I was like, because she was referring to Maguki. If anybody calls my friends from Maguki's office anymore, I'm, I'm over it. I'm like a rattlesnake. I'm pushed into a corner right now, and I'm about to strike, and it's not pretty. Like, I do not like feeling this threatened by people that I went to school with and known for so many years. Mm-hmm. And, like, if this random girl is going to call me and then, you know, I have to go talk to cops because of a phone call that I didn't even know was being recorded. I, like, what am I supposed to do now? No, I understand. I understand your concern. And it's all because of the Facebook reward. She would have never said anything about anything if there wasn't $5,000 pushed into her face like that. And then on top of that, my Facebook is hacked, so who knows who hacked into that? Who knows, you know, if they even, they went through all my messages probably. They've seen who I've been talking to. There's going to be more people who are going to contact me about some dumb stuff. Well, whoever you've talked to on your Facebook, I mean, whatever you may have said, it's been consistent with what we already know, correct? Exactly. So, like, I just don't understand how that's even right to do how do you how do you get evidence from somebody who wasn't even a part of it how is that evidence at all well i wouldn't say it's evidence i think what they're doing is as we will do from time to time too is just reach out with some to somebody in hopes that maybe that somebody knows something Mm -hmm. maybe they do maybe they don't um sometimes it works sometimes it, it doesn't but uh and I 
think that's kind of what they're doing. They're fishing for people that may one time or another had a conversation well, with you. Why are they going after the thief drug addicts that are worthless? Why are they going after the good people who know me? Well, they're just going after anybody that's willing to tell them a story. Yeah. And it's up to them and everybody else to determine whether or not there's any truth to it. Um, you know, from what I know of you and from what I know of this investigation, you know, I know that what Katie's saying is not the truth. Um, why is Katie saying it? I don't really know for sure. Could it be the $5,000 reward? Could it be the idea that she's got herself in a ringer right now and she thought maybe for a moment anyway that this would help her get out of trouble? I don't know. Um, but what I do know is, is what she's implying to others. It's, 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 she's not making a truthful statement. She's not. And, and uh, there's nothing, you know, if he said, she said stuff mm -hmm. like this. That really, you know, I'm already secluded enough. Mm -hmm. I work and I come home. Like, don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's completely fine with me for right now. But when the day comes where I can log back into my Facebook account without people threatening me via message. Right. Or, you know, like, I just... I want people to know how I'm feeling right now. I want them to know how much this is ruining my life. I understand. I understand, and that's only fair for you to think that and want that. But with regard to uh, what was said on the phone, she tried to say that I told her that William did it. And then he, Oliver questioned me about um, how... Like, what I said to her about the whole case thing or whatever. And I, I just straight up, after she said um, her story, what she thought I said, I told, in the phone call, I said, that's a fucking lie. And I started getting really mad about it. Like, really upset. So, if they take that and McGookie hears that, why wouldn't he just believe it? Like, why wouldn't he believe... For the same reasons, he won't believe what we've told him in the past. And, and again, it goes back to from the beginning of this conversation, why we we start to withhold telling McGookie, telling Mike and Shannon um, what we know. You know, I, I met with Brady Gasser a couple weeks ago, and that meeting was with the intent of, one, does Brady have any information for me? Two, just to maybe talk with Brady and kind of let him know that we've done all this work and, and maybe he can be the messenger that goes back to the family and says, hey, look, guys, they're still working it. They feel pretty comfortable. They know what happened and, and so forth. But that kind of backfired on us because... You know, now my name gets thrown out there that I said this and I said that and, and my interview, which I knew was going to be, re I didn't know he was recording it. I was recording it. Um, so I didn't have a problem with it being recorded. Um, but I suspected that he was probably recording and I suspected in due time it would be out there for God and everybody to, to, to hear. And, and sure enough, it was. Um, so, you know, they only hear what they want to hear, and they only put out there what they want to put out there. Uh, they don't care about you. They don't care about William. They don't care about Evan Nyler. They certainly don't have any care in the world for the sheriff's office. Um, they believe that what happened happened. And there's, in my opinion, there's going to be no way of convincing them of that at the moment. Um, if another agency or another person has a tendency to believe what we believe as the investigators, they become part of the so-called conspiracy. No. Um, you know, the conspiracy consists of us and you and and BCI and and the polygraph examiners and, and everybody that has come to the same conclusion that we've all come to that it's a very unfortunate accident. What happened, happened. Uh, the sooner they can come to terms with that, you know, the better off everybody will be. But when so that ever happens. Register, like, just had a thing out today. That yeah, I read you that. You guys are exhuming them again? We are. They're letting We you? are, yeah. All right. And, like, you don't think that with the tissue being, like, decomposed or whatever, it's going to, like, change anything? No. Um, there was tissue collected by Dr. Weck from the very get-go. 
when I went to collect some of that tissue, I'm not a forensic pathologist by any means. I went there with the understanding that Dr. Weck had a part of Jacob that we needed for DNA purposes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a various different ways of collecting DNA, comparing DNA to back to, to so and so. Uh, we had gone out and collected some of Jacob's personal items, a toothbrush, a, a stocking cap that contained some of his hairs and his jacket and so forth. Um, so I took that DNA and compared it to some of the DNA at the crime scene. Um, to show that what I collected at the crime scene is definitely Jacob's mm -hmm. DNA. Well, I didn't have Jacob himself to collect the DNA from, so the next plan, which is plan B, is to collect some of those things that belong to Jacob that would have some of his DNA. And again, that would be the comb and the toothbrush and whatnot. So we got all that, we compared it to the DNA, and that DNA, for the most part, says, yeah, that's Jacob's DNA. But it's not like 100% sure. So the best way to say 100% sure that that's his DNA is to actually get it from Jacob. Well, what's the best way to do that? Well, let's go up and collect some of the tissue. So it's not like the tissue that's surrounding his, like, gunshot. Yeah, they have that. They have but they only them. gave us half of that, and they won't give us the other half. And we need a whole we need a whole why section. Why wouldn't they give you guys are the investigators? You guys are supposed to be working with me, so I wouldn't think that give can you. then just why are they doing what they've been doing okay. as as us the investigators? So okay, that's fine. So now let us go back and exhume the body, and we'll do our own. But like with test. the fluids being pumped into him, like that doesn't that's, affect that's not going to change. Wounds. No, I can't. Okay. There's a reason why we're going to exhume the body for a second time. I can't really go into that with well, you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that'll all come out in due time. Um, but there is a reason why we need to do that. We can't just rely on what Dr. Wex, Dr. Wex says is a homicide. Yeah. Hey, the guy's 83 years old, and I won't argue that he's probably the best of the best, but I will argue in front of his face that he's wrong for calling it a homicide. It's not a homicide. See, but in his previous reports, he didn't say yeah. any of that. Like, it was yeah. like a 19-page report or Three whatever. months later, he that decides to call it a nothing. homicide. Yeah, so, like, just because of his opinion, all this is, like... It's starting to come back on us, like me. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and like it's coming back on you guys yeah, too. Sure and I understand that, but mm -hmm. all because of an opinion from somebody who, in his previous report, said nothing that matched his opinion. Yeah. Like, what is his going own on? report contradicts itself? Yeah. So what is going on? Like, why? Why is that even held liable in anybody's point of view? Well, it's not. It's just an opinion. That's one person's yeah, opinion. That so we need. Opinion. We need to be able to. I know. It's. It's. That one it's opinion. Tore everybody is the apart. That supposedly right. registered. I know. Printing all these stories. This one opinion yeah. is the fact that my social security number, along with his and Evans, got released to Facebook. This one opinion. I know. I know. That's, and we go back to me saying from the get-go of this little interview of ours is that's what made this this case so unique is, is how they handle it. You know, our opinion apparently isn't good enough. It wasn't good enough on March on, on March 2nd of 2012, and here it is April of 2013, and it's still not good enough. But yet they have a, a forensic pathologist who knows nothing about the case other than what he's read in the register and, and other than what he what conversations he's had with the Lombarios, he's basing his investigation based on what he sees physically in front of him, that being Jacob, and from what he's being told. He, he hasn't seen the pictures. He hasn't read our reports. He hasn't reached out to the investigators that were there that night, nor has he reached out to those who have done all the follow-ups since then. He's just making his opinion based on solely what he thinks happened. And, and, and like I stated earlier, his reporting itself contradicts it himself for making such a statement. So, but that's what we're up against. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get this interview with you. Well, yeah. Once you get the phone call, like just when you listen to it, just think of how you would react. You know, like I wouldn't go into her. Well, 
lawsuit case that she has against herself, talking to her lawyer, saying, hey, Katie, did this, you know. I wouldn't, if her lawyer called me, I wouldn't say that I even knew her, you no. know. I wouldn't, I would be like, who's Katie? That's what I would say. Just remember that I... I'm really bad at describing some things, and I was really upset when she started saying that stuff. So I even, I told her on the phone that wasn't true. I would start blowing up on her. You know, I just want you to listen to it, and then, you know, when when the spike comes up of where they think, I don't know, the cops, they thought it was odd that I would say just, Tell them you don't know me. That's what they think was odd. I wasn't saying it like, oh yeah, it's because it's McGookie. It's not because it was you guys right. telling her. Right. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it was McGookie, and I don't want him knowing anything else because he's been a snake yeah. the entire time. Yep. So that's what I'm talking about. When I understood. I'm talking to her on that yep. Call. yep, I understand. Good. Did Chief Deputy indicate what he's going to do with this or where the investigation is going to go or if there even is an investigation? He already talked to Katie and he talked to me and he said that he was just going to write some stuff up and then talk to you. Like he just had to fill out paper yeah. and pretty much just talk to you and he yeah. said that he was going to give you like whatever you wanted. From yeah. Him, so. and, and he probably will. I mean, I know I know the Chief Deputy over there, Oliver, fairly well. Um, but at the moment, I have not listened to it. It's not going to change things. It's not. It doesn't hurt our case any. Yeah. Um, but it, it has taken a lot of my time just to go back and right. you know document all this and come and see you and and whatnot. So uh, a lot of our a lot of time has gone into this on our behalf, and you know there's other stuff I could be out there doing. I shouldn't be doing this, but the point where you know we've done what we've done but anyway is there like an ending date for this you know i really think that by exhuming the body will probably be the last thing that we need to do mm -hmm. unless something else pops up at the last minute all these things keep popping up you know he keeps trying to put a stop to this and put a stop to that he being magooki and, and uh you know and then they kind of you know throw us for a loop that you know, they got this new witness, and I don't think they're... I can't believe there's not a gag order. Well, we tried that to a point, um, but the judge denied that. I wish there would be a gag order. I wish you could see how messed up everything is now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's not going to go away anytime soon, I can tell you that. Even when we're done with the investigation... Mm -hmm lawsuit portion of it's going to be out there. You know, obviously they tried to sue. They are suing Dr. Wookie, but they tried to bring us into the lawsuit. They tried to bring you into the lawsuit. And that all got declined. They denied all that. Why would they try to get us, like, brought into it? Like, what did we Because do? They're, they're, they're trying to sue those who are responsible for what had happened. They're trying to sue. I mean, they firmly believe that one of you three held the gun and shot Jacob. I want a lawsuit for the emotional distress that I've had to go through. And, and, and I agree with you, and I'm not here to tell you what to do, but, you know, maybe if you feel it's best, uh, maybe contact an attorney and see what they think. Do, do you do you collect the articles that are printed, or do you print them off? Have you been saving them? And Yeah, and I guess, you know, continue to do that, because we, we do the same thing, because I think... And this is a Sean O'Connell's opinion. I think how this has been handled through the news media and how this has been handled through through Maguki's office has been handled all wrong. Everything from my very second day involved with this case, you know, I get a drunken phone call from Maguki at home, the booth. And, you know, that was very unprofessional on his part. And the things that he was... I'm glad he did that. And I recorded that conversation. I so... I have that. I have to ask you this. Is it legal for him to get my friends numbered, well, my acquaintances numbers, and have them re record our phone conversations if they don't even tell me that it's... Yeah, well, I'm recording this conversation well, yeah, between us. You're a cop. But... 
Anybody can record anybody as long as that anybody is present. Meaning, I can record this between you and I without telling you, mm -hmm. as long as I'm here, present. You don't have to know about it. Now, some states, you have to let the other party, at least two other people have to know. So it, it kind of varies from state to state, but Ohio says it's just a one party having knowledge. The brownies, are they in there? Yeah, they're in there. Okay. They should be okay. As long as one party has now, it's just being recorded. So, yeah, they can call you. I just found out every now and then I get on the Justice for Jake site. And I've seen where Mike Lombardios has recorded my conversation between he and I without my knowledge. Isn't it scary? Well, it's, you just got to be careful. And that's what's made this case so unique is, is just not that the case in itself, as far as what happened, happened. It's a very unfortunate accident. No if, ands, buts about it. But how the news media has dealt with it and, and how McGookie's handled himself on a professional level, whether it be on the record, off the record. Oh, no. Your deposition, I mean, I watched that. That was just, I was just shocked by it. I've never seen anything to that extreme. Um, Wasn't it screwed up that they made me reenact that? Oh, my gosh. Okay, no, is that legal? But you know what? You did an excellent, excellent job when you yeah. got up there and you finally, this is how it happened. You used your left hand. You, you demonstrated what happened. I mean, when you explained to Magooki that you didn't want to do it, you didn't want to do it, you didn't want to do it, and then when he gives you that phone gun and he's asking you about the hammer and you didn't know what a hammer was, I, I mean, felt so stupid. Well, I did. I felt so dumb. I was like crying. <laughs> but you did. I thought, and Dean Henry has made mention of this as well, that you did an excellent job holding your composure and presenting to Maguki as far as what really happened. How you, what you said, and how you demonstrated yourself, just gave us assurance that. She's right on. What she's been telling us from the very get-go is what happened that night. Um, she's been very consistent throughout. Uh, you know, we took your, when you wrote those written statements out, um, and don't necessarily make this public at this point, but we did what we call a statement analysis, which is like a polygraph of your own or handwriting. Because a lot of times when people lie and they write, um, you can tell it. You can read into that. I can't necessarily because I'm not trained for that, but there are experts that are trained for that. So we took your statement, Evan's statement, William's statement, and had a person look at those and, and do analysis on them. And he says, well, the persons that wrote this were very truthful at the time they wrote those, which we suspect it were to be yeah. true. But, again, it just goes back and it shows your, your credibility. is is not only yours, but William's and Evan's and, and everything else. Yeah, there's a few conflicts these stories from the get-go where people were sitting and, and whatnot, but that's that's irrelevant. That doesn't change the facts. Yeah. All we're out to do is just is present the facts as they are and as we know them, which obviously indicates what happened happened. I so. think God, you guys believe us. Oh my gosh. It would be so much harder if like everybody was pointing fingers and being like, well, what if this actually yeah. did happen? Again, like I said from before, Brittany, we take away your statement. Let's say you guys just didn't want to say nothing that night. Mm -hmm. If I took away what you guys saw and what you guys have told us, I could still determine that Jacob held the gun in his own hands and shot himself. Why don't they put that in the paper? Well, and we will in due time. Okay, yeah. But uh, but at the moment, we just... You guys have a lot going on anyway. So it's like, I've seen it in the Sandusky Register before about, you know, all the other stuff. From oh, we got a... Yeah, we our deputy shot somebody a few years ago yeah. and they think we were in the wrong for doing that. I mean, what are you supposed to do when you walk in a room and a guy gets off the couch and points a shotgun at you? Oh, my gosh. You know, apparently we were in the wrong for doing that, but that's another story. Yeah, itself, and but. I understand. Like, the cops, you guys are, sorry to say this, but everybody looks at you like you're wrong people for oh. being cops. Yep. So, I mean, yep. don't feel bad. They got us pegged as being now, idiots, and yeah. We now know what it feels like yep. because everybody's, yep. you know, well, not everybody, but a lot of people. Yep. 
they're starting to like come after us about you know just stupid stuff like how we forgot that we ate at Terry's you know that night it's like oh my gosh I eat there all the time yeah. <laughs> all the time it's, I'm always eating yeah. there and, and that doesn't change the facts yeah you exactly. know what we really need to know is what happened to Jacob that night and and I can comfortably say we know we know what happened all we got to go back is just look at everything mm -hmm. and you know not that we don't cross our t's and dot our i's on any other matters but this particular case we we have to really be careful to make yeah. sure we dot all our i's and cross all our t's because you know they're gonna they're going to dispute our findings. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. They've done it from day one, and they're going to continue to do it. And, and so it, my only thing is if um, the coroner would have showed up, this would have been an open and shut case, right? Not necessarily. Let's let's say hypothetically the coroner showed up, and he says, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you think the family would have bought off on that? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't I'm, think I will, so. From what they say, yes. But, I mean... Yeah, it's not any different that, that he wanted us to do an autopsy. Okay, you're finally going to get your autopsy mm -hmm. done. Now they've been fighting us tooth and nail on, on wanting us to do that. Yeah, uh, see, but I was kind of confused on it, too, because if you have, like, all the tissue samples and everything that you already need, but we which don't. is what they, but see, the register, yeah. they already say that you do, and yeah. like, I just didn't understand why does he have to get dug up again, because don't you guys already have enough evidence, no. and then... When they first wanted to dig him up, I was confused on it. I was like, why do they even want to do that? Like, his body has been in the ground for so many months already, and it's, like, full of embalming fluid, and it's... Yeah, it depends upon what you're looking for. I mean, you can, you can dig a body up that's been in the ground for 100 years to still get DNA. Well, yeah, you can get DNA, yeah. but it, what they, like, perceive it on Facebook and stuff, it's about the wounds, to see if it has burns on it or whatever. And, that's what they think. And that's what... I I was like, you know, I already thought that, you know, tissue samples from that would have been collected. And why would they have to dig them up for evidence that they already have? Yeah. But I'm not a cop, and I don't deal with it, so I don't know. Most of the time, I just stay out of it. <laughs> yeah, and that's all you can do, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's more than just looking at tissues as far as examining the body. And... So you guys aren't just looking at the wounds, you guys are like... There's more for us to do, yeah. And and, and they know that, they being mm -hmm. Maguki and, and, and everyone, the family knows that. Um, but they won't they won't come out with it. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't come out with the idea that they got this new witness who says she had talked to you and told you that William Lewis had the gun in his hand. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised that hasn't come out yet. Um, no, it's not true. Maybe, maybe not. I think a lot of it has to do with the idea that we got on it fairly quickly because as soon as I got wind of it, I, after I, I tried calling Greg Majoy and I couldn't get an answer, I said, you know what, let me just call William, let me call Brittany, they'll tell me. And that's when I had that conversation with you a week ago. And uh, So should I have called you like right away? Like if something you know, if something like that happens again, if somebody's asking a lot of questions, you think it's a little suspicious, yeah, just give me a courtesy call and let me know, hey, look, and I'll look into it and see what, what's, what's become of it. The other cop, Detective Oliver, Deputy Oliver, mm -hmm. he told me that it was McGookie's investigators that made her do it. Mm -hmm. It was. It was Greg Majoy. He's the one that took control of the idea of her placing a phone call to you and having it recorded. That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, do they do this on other cases, too? Yeah, they do. We do it all the time. All we, the time? We, we try to have, we call them a CI. We try to have a confidential informant place a phone call to another source in hopes that that other source will say something incriminating. And we got it on recording. So... Well, it's a good thing that they can't come at me with that kind of shit because I don't have it. I don't take it. I don't buy into it. I'm so mad at her. Like, seriously, I was so mad at her after that phone call. It wasn't even about anything. I was just, why did you call me? Yep. Say these things about me. Like, enough people already look at me as if I'm lying, which I'm totally not. I took a courtesy polygraph test for the family to make sure, you know, like, 
you guys, this doesn't hold value in court at all, but I'm doing this for your own peace of mind. And they still don't believe it. So, like, what the heck? Like, there's nothing I can do at this point, and I just feel so bad for them. I really do. Like, I feel terrible for them. And there's nothing I can do or say to make them feel better because everything I say is the truth, and they don't like it. They don't like the truth. I agree. I agree. What's what's uh, what's your relationship between you and Kaylee right now? Is it still? Um. Well, she's not talking to me. But Sunday, I went up to Terry's Tavern, and she was there. And as she was walking out the door, I said bye, Kaylee, and she said bye. So that's a, that's progress, I guess. I'm still not allowed to see Ella, but yeah. You know, hopefully she'll let me see Ella when all this is over and she like can see the facts for herself because I I never really like sat down and talked to Kaylee about it it hurt me too much I couldn't do it and you know I've never talked to Shannon about it either like ever because you know Mike was the only person who I thought could handle it really and I don't know he's a grieving father I understand why he's doing it like I understand any any father would want you know to know the answers or whatever they've had the answers they've had the answers since March 2nd the night that this happened I think it's just because it says suicide and they want it to be accidental and they don't want it to say suicide because Mm -hmm. he didn't intend to kill himself but they're you know like that's no reason to come after me and tell me that I'm a liar that's no reason to say what you know whatever I've said or anything is wrong doesn't make sense to me why they would do that, right. you know? Yep. It's just crappy. It's a really crappy, mixed up, crazy situation. Yes, right it now. is. Yes, it is. And it's not going to go away anytime soon. So just kind of, you know, hang in there, if you will, and hang tight and do what you got to do and try to move on. And that's, you know, it's, it's really easy now because I have, like, a job where I'm working. 10 hours a day right it's been keeping me you know pretty focused on just getting money and going home getting money going home (laughs) so you do you're 